Hi, I'm Pat, and I work for College Radio here at FIU. Today I have a story for you that is, in fact, about radio, and that for me is very comforting. So, it turns out, I think a lot of us, we assume that radio is an old medium. Even I do this. I don't listen to the radio, despite the fact that I am an intern at a radio station. <laughs> um, right as we speak, my show is being aired on, on the radio. You could listen to it, but I don't. Um, but I found a story on, by Quartz Media that actually says that radio is actually thriving more than ever, ironically enough, because of streaming services. Um, the name of the article is Radio Survived the Tape, the CD, and the iPod. In the age of Spotify, it is more popular than ever. Now, a survey shows that 49% of Americans discover new music via the radio, that is the majority. 40% discover it through friends, and 27% discover it through online music services. I fall within that 27%. I consider myself a bit of a music-obsessed person. I am on Spotify every day, all day. Before Spotify, it was piracy. I would download music and, you know, make playlists on my own. Now on Spotify, I have the ability, I have all this music at my access to discover and it is something that's quite overwhelming which is definitely referenced within the article um, so what the article references is something that they call the tyranny of choice it's actually called tyranny of choice by academics and analysts so Larry Miller who directs a business a music business program at NYU what he said is basically quote unquote you're confronted with all the music in the world what the hell are you supposed to listen to Somebody tell me what's good. And I've definitely been in that situation. Sometimes when that happens, I rely on some of Spotify's playlists, such as uh, Discover Weekly or their daily mixes, which are catered to my personal taste. But I know that most people actually use um, their radio. And when this article states that radio qualifies as both terrestrial radio, such as AM, FM radio, and online radio services, such as Pandora. So Pandora counts as radio. And Pandora is quite popular. If you go to any store, any Froyo place, <laughs> there's a Pandora on. And it's, I personally, I understand the need for something like Pandora, but I hate Pandora and I hate Spotify radio because there is no real depth to, to what they're playing. If they play me a couple of songs, I've already heard them all before because I used to listen to a lot of radio when I was younger. So Though I think there is a need for radio, there is a need for it to be more expansive, which is why I am such a big supporter of college radio and why I work for college radio. College radio has been around for a really long time, and it is the reason that so many alternative acts have become so prominent, such as probably the biggest college radio success is R.E.M., who became a mainstream success after that, but they became popular through college radio, and a lot of British and foreign acts became popular in the U.S. because of college radio airplay. Um, the music that I play on my shows, obviously, within college radio, we are not allowed to play top 40 because it goes against our ethic. Not, to, not just of like the college radio alternative philosophy, but because we are the alternative to mainstream radio. So, yeah, I found this article really fascinating once again. Um, and it just kind of reaffirmed my love for college radio and for Spotify too. I know the tyranny of choice is very overwhelming, but to me that is what makes Spotify such an amazing platform that if you really are interested, you can find absolutely, mostly anything on it. So what do you think about this? Let me know. <laughs> and yeah, tune into college radio.